student and the coordinator of the student service centre. First, you have some time to read questions 1 to 3. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 3. Hi, sit down please. How can I help you? Thank you. I'm a student in the sociology faculty. I'm coming to ask for some information about renting a room in the college or near the campus. My name is Sarah. Yes, Sarah. How long have you been here in Sydney? You are not new, I suppose. No, I'm in my second year. I came to Sydney 18 months ago from Korea. Where are you living now? I live with my aunt in my cousin's room. It's pretty nice to live with my relatives, but unfortunately my cousin has finished his term and is returning from Britain next week. I have to rent a room for myself. Yes, it sounds a little unfortunate, but I suppose it's a good chance for you to have a deeper understanding to real world. I hope so. Well, what sort of thing are you looking for? Uh, what we provide ranges from shared flat to homestay. And of course, we have houses with gardens, if you like. No, the house with a garden is obviously out of my price range. Shared flat is not bad, but I prefer a homestay. I enjoy the feeling of living with the family. When do you plan to begin the rent? Next week, you just said? No, my cousin is arriving by next week, so I hope to move out by this weekend. This weekend, okay. The main area we deal with is around the university. Around the university, aha. Uh -huh. Do you have anything near the northern gate of the university? You know, the sociology faculty is near the northern gate. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 4 to 10. Yes, uh, what sort of price are you thinking of? Well, could you give me some idea? You know, I have no experience of renting a room. I don't know what price is reasonable, but I hope it's not over $300. I see. Usually the homestay ranges from $180 per month. Only $180? Yes, to $350, depending on a number of different factors. What does it depend on? Well, obviously, the quality of the house, the facilities, and extra services. Oh, I don't care about the quality very much, as long as it's clean. As to the facilities, I want the room with the separate bathroom. Kitchen isn't a necessity, because I don't want to cook by myself. I hope to have meals with the family, if possible. Okay, let me check the files. Mm, yes, I think this one might suit you. It's a family house with two vacant bedrooms. How about the owner of the house? I mean, is it a family, or...? According to the file, it is a retired lady. She wants to find college students as tenants. That's great! What's the condition of the rooms? The bigger bedroom is furnished and with a bathroom, and the rent is $320 per month. The smaller one charges $250. It is furnished too, but without bathroom. Oh, $320. It's a bit out of my range, but I think I prefer the bigger one. How about the meals? Well, the rent includes breakfasts and suppers. No lunches, however. You have to buy your lunch. That's no problem. I usually have my lunch in the college cafeteria. And that doesn't cover the water bill and electricity fee, but the laundry is included. Fine. Could you tell me the address? Yes, it's on 323 West Park Road. Let me get that down. 323. OK, it's near the university. So, when can I have a look at the room? You know, I'm a little pressed for time. The file says the landlady is in every afternoon, 
So this week, say Friday. Oh, I'm afraid I can't make it then. I have a lecture on Friday afternoon till five thirty. How about Thursday? Okay, that's fine. Would five be okay? Yes, fine. Just come here. Yes, here in the student service office. Oh, before I forget, before moving, you have to pay one month's rent in advance. Really? Oh, I didn't know that before. Could I ask why? As the deposit, you know, in case you damage the property or move out without giving notice. Usually, this doesn't happen, but standing in the owner's shoes. Yes, I understand it all. So that's three hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, I'll take the money if I'm satisfied. Well, a word of advice: don't forget to get a receipt when you pay the deposit or rent. Yes, thank you so much. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to listen to a talk about the food we eat. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Welcome to the food we eat, sponsored by Safeway. Increasingly, we know more about the effects of our eating habits and lifestyles on our health. While new information can change old ideas. The new stories can often be confusing. At Safeway, we try to help customers not only in the range and types of food offered, but also by providing up-to-date, reliable information in areas we know are of interest and which relate to the diet we eat. Today, we are going to talk about sugar. Recently, doctors have been advising us to eat less sugar. The health recommendation to use less sugar is for two reasons. Firstly, for the sake of our teeth, since the amount and frequency of sugar consumption links to decay. Secondly, as sugar is a good source of calories, it can easily be a problem if we tend to be overweight. The dental risk is because bacteria, which occur naturally in our mouth, feed on carbohydrates, sugar and starch, to form plaque and acid. Plaque is a sticky coating that prevents the bacteria being removed by saliva. The acid attacks the tooth itself. This takes time, however, so the trick is to avoid sticky foods like sweets, which stay around in crevices, feeding the bacteria. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Regular brushing, preferably with a fluoride toothpaste, helps remove particles and resist acid. The worst thing you can do is nibble sweet things between meals. It puts your teeth under constant attack. A sweet tooth develops gradually. 
And you might be surprised at how you can steadily unlearn the taste, taking in fewer calories and saving your teeth. Here's some ways. A. Gradually cut down the sugar in tea and coffee till you can stop altogether or switch to sweetness. B. Choose snacks with a lower sugar content. Fresh fruit, raw vegetables, crackers, milk or low-flat natural yogurt. Remember, some fruits like raisins have lots of sugar. C. Look for reduced sugar alternatives. There are more and more around, from diet drinks to yogurts, even jams and sauces. D. Try gradually to cut back on the sugar you use in cooking, especially in baking. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear two business studies students discussing a presentation they'll do on an article on working effectively in groups. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26. So, Brad, what did you think of the article on group work? Oh, hi, Helen. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, with helpful pieces of advice on how to make group work effective. I think we were lucky to be given such a straightforward text to present at the Management Skills Seminar. Yeah. Actually, shall we discuss it now? Have you got time? Sure. It's only a 10-minute presentation, so we just need to explain and then give our views on the main points raised in the article. I'll jot down some notes. Right. So, there are three main sections. I suggest we start with listening. Yeah, effective listening in groups, because it's not something that's frequently covered on courses in our field. No, and we should say that in the presentation. Yeah. And also, effective listening's pretty simple, you know. I don't think it's hard to learn. Well, people think it's easy, but in my experience, most of us tend to be very lazy listeners. OK, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I do think we should emphasize is the power of the listener's posture, gestures, etc., in making speakers feel respected. Not that you're just waiting for them to finish before jumping in with your own ideas. Uh-huh. OK, right. Uh, the next section is on goal setting. Let's make sure we're clear what the article says on this. Yeah. Well, firstly, it says that all group members must be given time to explain their own goals. That's it, yeah. And then, did it say that the whole group should agree on common goals? That's a bit too strong. It's more that everyone's agendas should be equally acceptable. But it does say that goals have to be realistic, you know... Achievable within a particular time? You've got it. That's really what the article's saying. There isn't really any point in having ideals if group members know they won't come to anything within a reasonable period. So, I think a summary covering those points will be enough for that part of the presentation, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Now, the last section is about conflict resolution. Actually, I thought it was the worst part of the article. Me too. I don't think it went into sufficient detail on the issue. Actually, I thought it devoted too much space to it, but that it was all rather boring, you know? It didn't mention some of the more radical theories. Absolutely. I found that really irritating. Right. And also, I think it could have said more about 
conflict sometimes being healthy in groups. Absolutely. It just mentioned rather glibly about how we should avoid thinking of winners and losers, and that quick resolution of conflict is always desirable. Without explaining what these terms mean? Well, it gives quite detailed definitions, but doesn't develop a proper argument. Right. So, for the presentation, I think we just give some definitions and... And then explain what we felt were the weaknesses in the article's treatment of conflict resolution. Yeah, good. Now you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. So, let's think about what we have to prepare for the actual presentation. Well, I suppose we'll use PowerPoint, but I'm hopeless at using it, especially if it has any visuals. I really have to look into doing a course on it because I know I'll need it in the future. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm quite happy using PowerPoint and I'll put it together when everything else is ready. That's a relief. But yes, do that later. OK. Now, I heard the tutor saying we have to include some well-chosen quotations from the article. I'm not sure if we do. I'll email him to find out. No need. I can just have a look at the specs he gave us when he set the task. That'll be quicker. But the tutor definitely said we have to prepare a handout to go with the talk. I'm not really sure how we do that. Sarah did one last year. Who's she? She's doing the same option as me on marketing. I'll ask her advice on what to include. Great. So that just leaves the bibliography at the end. I suppose it'll mainly be articles. Yeah. So we'll just look on the web, and we can leave that till later. But we've been advised against that. Well, we could have a look through some journals in the library. I think we should start by looking through module handbooks. I think that'll give us some good leads. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's all the topics. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear an introduction about the tutorial courses of the physics school. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Orientation Week. This is the Physics School session, and we'll welcome Professor Smith, the head of the school, to introduce you to the tutorial system. Welcome, Professor Smith. <laughs> Thank you. You may have noticed life at university is totally different from that of school. 
For you, tutorials are an important part of the teaching program. Tutors are the primary contact between undergraduate students and the school. A tutor is the student's personal tutor as well as their academic tutor. Tutorials for physics undergraduates consist of six students who meet each week with their tutor for at least 50 minutes. For radiographer students, tutorials will normally consist of a group of about 10 students who will meet fortnightly with their tutor for a period of at least 50 minutes. In the first semester, the tutorials are during weeks 1 to 11. For semester 2, they are during weeks 14 to 24. Everybody involved is expected to be present and on time, and the tutor will also be available in week 12 and 25 to discuss problems that arise during revision, but attendance by students is optional. Now I'm going to introduce to you the stages and activities of the tutorials. The induction period is from week 1 to 3. I know that a significant minority of you experience culture shock during your first few months at university, and the important function of this stage is to identify students who are having difficulty integrating into the academic program. In particular, tutors should check your attendance of lectures, tutorials, laboratory sessions, and this sort of things. Tutors also help you tackle work in a systematic and effective manner. Stage 2 begins from the fourth week. Some tutorials of this period are to be devoted to discussion or going over the students' lecture notes, but approximately 50% of tutorial time is to be devoted to coursework. You should finish the weekly homework assignments of two hours duration with at least 50% involving written work. At least eight homework assignments during the year should involve answering problems set on coursework. The written work collected by the tutor should be marked within a week of handing in, and generally the assignments should be graded. The third stage starts from week 8 till the 10th. During this period, math and four core physics programs are included. The majority of tutorial time should be devoted to work which supports the lecture programs and laboratory work. At least 60% of homework assignments should involve written work. The assignment may involve writing an account of, or notes on, a specified range of topics. The written work should also be marked and graded. Short oral presentations by students should be included. They are possibly on general physics topics or essays. The last week's personal development planning is a structured and supported process. The primary objective for PDP is to help you to become more independent and confident, self-directed learners and encourage a positive attitude to learning throughout life. It is undertaken by yourselves to reflect upon their own learning, performance and achievement and to plan for their personal educational and career development. Finally, if without evidence of good reason you miss more than two sessions during a semester, or if the tutor is not satisfied with your progress, the matter must be immediately referred to the program director who will normally issue formal warning, verbal and written. This will inform you that your place at university is under threat. So this was today's listening. We all appreciate your efforts and also do subscribe for daily real exam level practice as Practice can give you your desired band score. Thank you.